Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Bless the name of the Lord. He is worthy to be praised and he's worthy to be adored. We lift up holy hands in one accord and we sing, blessed be the name, blessed be the name, blessed be the name of the Lord. Just one second as we're going to get going, or I should say now, good at, well, no, yeah, still good morning to everyone. Amen. Amen. Getting this going for you guys here. Oh, good morning, good morning. I am the right Reverend Dr. Uh, Kenneth K. Booth Jr. or uh, Bishop Kenneth K. Booth Jr., however you want to say it, um, senior pastor of the Real Church of the Desert Cathedral Incorporated and prelate for the How To Fellowship. We bless God for another time of fellowship together with you guys on our various platforms as we see what the saith the Lord. Um and see what thus saith the Lord for us today, amen. Um we definitely um we definitely want to um apologize to you guys for slightly running late this morning. Please keep your uh your bishop in prayers. Uh had a little health scare this morning and I pretty much know why. So just pray uh that God keeps his hands of strength on me that he continues to give me wisdom and properly balance in my schedule because that's what it all boils down to. So i um, asking for you guys' prayers, but I had a determination in me this morning. I say, if I got to sit down, however I got to do it, I made a commitment, no matter what, to be of use for the master service and to bring you guys the word of the Lord. So we are here a little late, but we are here nonetheless. Amen. Today is Youngster Sunday at the ministry. It is Youngster Sunday at the ministry. And typically for Youngster Sunday, fifth Sundays, typically you would not see me in a, a cassock and things like that. Um, typically I have on a t-shirt and some jeans today. Amen. Um, but I was led not to be in full vestment or nothing like that. But I was led today in particular to be in the cassock for a certain reason that we'll get to a little later in service. Um, today's service will be slightly different, A, because we are running slightly behind. And B, today is geared to the youth and young adult. And what we're dealing with today. I really want to, I'm feeling led to kind of just kind of, you know, say a word of prayer and scripture. We're going to, you know, a little praise and worship. We're going to get right to it today because we're living in a very pivotal, a p very pivotal time in our history right now. It's pivotal when you look at the different events that are transpiring on a global scale from a prophetic standpoint that are being revealed and fulfilled rather uh, that are being fulfilled. Excuse me. Um, and we're living in a time where our youth and young adult are really, really turning away from the faith left and right. Even some of those that you think are so right when they around you, when they not around you is when the truth come out. Amen. So today's word is directed for our youth and young adult or what we call our youngsters at the ministry. Um, and today's approach is not going to be our typical Sunday approach. I was led to go over some things with the youth today, those that tune in on the various platforms and want to do a more of a discussion standpoint versus me preaching to you, quote unquote, um, like any other Sunday. So you guys really get some of the things that we're going to cover on today. Now, for anyone out there who's done an in-depth study on heaven and hell, you know that you can give a person a summary stroke uh, 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 or paintbrush stroke um, of the topics in one sermon, but to really get into some of the things behind the pages that do require much research, it is almost impossible to put it in one sermon. 
So we're going to do the best we can today for the youth. We're going to focus on certain things. And slightly down the line, we'll come back and look at some things much more in depth. Amen. So we bless the name of the Lord. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be adored. Hallelujah. We praise him for keeping us. I just right now, I want to say thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus, for keeping me. I could be in the hospital this morning right now the way I was feeling. But you did something. You touched me. You made a way. You gave me the energy. You, you, you gave me the drive. You gave me the push. So I have to say thank you. I thank you for your people. I thank you for those that are tuning in now on our various platforms and those that are looking forward to tuning in later today. I praise you for them. I ask you to break up the stony ground of the heart and allow them to be able to receive the word that comes from you that goes forth today. We confess all of our sins to you. We ask you to forgive us of every sin, every shortcoming, every thorn, every weakness, any and everything that is unlike you, known and unknown, seen and unseen. We ask you to forgive us in the precious name of Jesus. We ask you to keep your blood covered upon us, to keep your blood covered upon our children, to keep your blood covered, up, covered upon our businesses and jobs and different things that we uh, deal with in this life. We need the blood of Jesus and we need the name of Jesus. We thank you for the sacrifice Jesus made on Calvary for us, Father. We thank you. We could not thank you enough. We thank you for the mercy and grace you impute to us daily. New mercies and new graces daily. We thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus, you get all glory. You get all honor. You get all reverence from us today and each and every day in the precious name of Jesus. We magnify your name. We give your name the praise. We give your name the glory. We give your name the honor. You are worthy. You are worthy. We thank you for your provision. We thank you for protection. We thank you for healing. We thank you for manifesting answered prayers and, and manifesting breakthroughs in our daily lives. We thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for discipling us in your ways. We thank you for teaching us your ways. We thank you when we make a misstep or a mishap, you don't throw us away like, like bad garbage. But you take us and allow us to jump up and you start dusting us off again. And like the potter does the clay, you start to remold and reformulate us again, working out those imperfections. We thank you. We thank you for just taking the time to work on us, Father, for having grace and mercy with us, for having compassion for us. We just want to say thank you. You already know what we have need of in our prayer request that we've already laid at the throne, at your feet of your throne. So we continue to say thank you for supplying the need. Thank you for answering the prayer request. Thank you for making a way out of no way. Now I ask you, Father, Father, as we go forward in this service, that you continue to give me supernatural strength this morning to get through this morning's service. I ask you to anoint these lips of clay and let me speak none of me and only you and only what you will have the people to hear. In the most precious name of Jesus, we pray and we say amen. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 We're going to get to an opening, our opening scripture for today. <clears throat> Excuse me. Our opening scripture for today. Amen. Our opening scripture from today is comes from the book of St. John. The book of St. John chapter chapter 8. Chapter St. John chapter 8 is where our opening scripture comes from today. And we're going to start chapter 8 starting at the 31st verse chapter 8 starting at the 31st verse and it reads then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him if you continue in my word you really are my disciples you will know the truth and the truth will set you free 
we are descendants of Abraham. They answered him, and we have never been enslaved to anyone. How can you say you will become free? Jesus responded, truly I tell you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. A slave does not remain in the household forever, but a son does remain forever. So if the son sets you free, you really will be free. I know you are descendants of Abraham, but you are trying to kill me because my word has no place among you. I speak what I have seen in the presence of the father. So then you do what you have heard from your father. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the doing of his most holy word. Amen. Oh, we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise, all the glory and all the praise. Hallelujah. Glory be the God. Before we are uh, we give you the glory. Hallelujah. There we go. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. We give you the praise. We give you the honor in the name of Jesus. How many out there know that sometimes you could just think of his goodness and think of his his worth and his praiseworthiness and he shot top of course, so it just starts to stir something in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So um, real briefly before we go into our next part of service, quick announcement um, for those that are available this coming week. If you are available and you are in the Inland Empire or surrounding areas or you will be traveling this way, um, I'm going to announce the date and time today after service on our social media. But this week, we will allow some of you guys to meet us down at the church property that we're wrapping things up on now and uh, allow you guys to check things out and um, kind of see what we're about to do not just with the church, but other opportunities for the community right there. So if you're interested in coming to check things out and see what God is doing at the ground level over there, I will be letting you guys meet me there this week. That information will be released today. Amen. You'll have it after service today. Location, um, which it's right off the freeway, very easy to access and but the location and time i will post sometime today after church amen 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 hallelujah hallelujah for the lord our god the Lord God Almighty reigns. Ha hallelujah. Ha hallelujah. For the Lord God Almighty reigns. Oh, I feel that in me. He's mighty. He's mighty. He's mighty. Hallelujah. Oh, he reigns, he reigns, he reigns. Hallelujah. Oh, he bako shata, hayasa. So again, today's service will be slightly different. Slightly different. Normally right now, we will go on the praise and worship and we will go straight. We will go praise and worship, a time of giving and straight into the word. We're going to do things slightly different today due to our timing. And who we're trying to reach. Amen. So today's discussion is very serious and is definitely aimed at the youth and young adult. And we're going to deal with something simply that it's your choice which one you want. It's your choice which one you want. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, I hear you, Holy Spirit. Before we start, we got to at least get one in. Um, Thank you, Jesus. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you, Holy Spirit. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. Mm. Yes, yes, we're going to do that. Amen. Amen. So today's sermon 
is literally it's your choice it is your choice and excuse me y'all I keep hearing this in my spirit and I have to be obedient so we're gonna at least get this one in before we get right to this word today amen and remember this is participation this is not spectation so wherever you are, please close your eyes, get in tune with the spirit of the Lord that he may reveal to you what he wants to reveal to you right where you are right now, for he is omnipresent. He is not just here with me. He's right there with you as well. Amen. So um, what a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, Jesus is the God we serve. Jesus is the God we serve. The angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Jesus is the God we serve. Amen, amen. Had to at least get that in, amen. Glory be to God. Uh, if you have your Bibles, wherever you are, please turn to the book of Revelations. The book of Revelations, the book of Revelations, chapter 21, verse 1. Amen. Revelations 21, verse 1. 21, verse 1. Amen. Amen. Again, <clears throat> excuse me, thanking you guys for those that have kept me in your prayers this week and uh, asking you guys to continue to keep me in your prayers um, regarding keeping my health on standpoint that I may be of further use of the Lord. And um, and um, that there may be proper balance, that there may be proper balance, proper balance, proper balance. Amen. <laughs> Revelations 21, starting at the first verse and put your finger there, put your finger there. Again, if I had to give it a subject today, today's subject will be literally it's your choice. It's your choice. I'm going to tell you today, my young brother and my young sister, about your future. And about the choice you make and where you will spend that future and just what future place will be like. I've spent some time now... Uh, you know, teacher from the pulpit on and off and now consecutively praise God that we're going full force of the Lord. Um, and I've had the opportunity on various occasions to tell individuals what hell looks like. Um, and today we will look at a place seen only by a few human eyes. Heaven. 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 I could easily do a sermon today that focuses on all the details of hell or an introductory sermon because it, trust me, it takes more than one sermon to really, really break it down for the youth to get it. But again, today we're going to, we're going to reference hell, but we're really going to put the emphasis on heaven. We're going to put the emphasis on heaven. Um, I've heard it said, I've heard it uh, said before that there are two things that are certain in this life, death and taxes. 
<laughs> and uh, maybe we could add to this short list that we will not only have taxes, but more taxes, more increased taxes. Amen. But seriously, there are two more things that are certain. I know you're probably wondering, well, Bishop, what is it? I'll tell you. The decision you make regarding your acceptance and belief and confession of the Lord Jesus Christ and what will happen or not happen because of that decision you make. I need you to gear in, engage today, pay attention to what we're discussing today. Amen. First, now let's look at what happens. Let's look at what happens. Once you die, one minute after you die, you will either be happier than you could ever imagine or you will be sadder and more frightened than you ever could have thought possible. Either or, you will either experience the, the most amount of sadness and, and things that you've ever experienced in this life, or you will be more scared, more terrified than you've ever been in your life. And for those that think we're so tough, we're so this, we're so that, I promise you, if it's down below that you open your eyes, all of that will go out the window quick, amen? Amen. So now let's take a look at the good side of heaven. <clears throat> Excuse me, or let's take a look at the good side, which would be heaven. Heaven is the good side based upon your decision that if you have not made it, you need to make today because there is no guarantee, my young brother and my young sister, that you will even wake up tomorrow. But we're going to come to that in a little bit. But no guarantee. Not about old age no more. Amen? So now when I talk about heaven today, I will be talking about what heaven will look like for eternity. After the world is gone and a new earth and universe is in place. There are many events that occur in between that are really important. Like the be my seat judgment which I have already preached about before in my lifetime. Or let's talk about the triumphant return of Christ with his saints. We can discuss the millennial kingdom and the final battle with Satan. But we will break those down in detail per, per category and preach on those at another time coming very soon, possibly in a summit uh, format but let's continue for today's purpose when we see our new place of habitation heaven for believers we will see things that are beyond our wildest imaginations mm -hmm. and what I tell you about today is only a small piece It's only a small piece of what awaits for you in heaven if you so elect to go there. Again, we have a choice. If you so elect to go to heaven. Jesus tells us in John 14 verse 2, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. For the saved, Jesus has indeed prepared a place just for you, just for me. 
indeed, this is a true, this is truth. And we see this place is referred to as a mansion. Now, a mansion is not what you may think. But in the Greek, the word for mansion is monet, which means a staying and abiding, a dwelling and abode. And it also means to make one's abode. Greek word for mansion is monet, which means a staying and abiding, a dwelling and abode. And it means to make one's abode. This leads us to believe simply that it actually may not be a mansion. It may be more like an apartment or a house. And yes, indeed, it may be a mansion. But I guarantee you this thing, it will be without comparison. There are no homes like it here on this earth. There is not one home on this earth, not one mansion, not one castle, not one palace that compares to the beauty of the mansion that he's gone to prepare for you and I. Nothing compares to it. Each one of us will have our own personal place to live. Any saints that were homeless on this earth will never be homeless again. Let me say that again and encourage you, some of, some of you out there. Any saints that were homeless on this earth will never be homeless again. There will be no rich section, no slums, no vacation homes or hotels. No big eyes and little U's. Where are all these homes located exactly? What will heaven exactly look like? Well, today let's look at today's scripture. Revelations chapter 21 verses 1 through 27. Amen. I'm going to read this in the NIV today. Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Revelations 21, 1 through 27. And we're going to exactly take a look here and see what it tells us. It is written. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and there was no more sea. Let me repeat that scripture because for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Why? Because the first earth and first heaven were polluted by the presence of evil. The first heaven and first earth passed away because they were polluted with the presence of evil. And there also would be no sea. There will be plenty of water and probably some small lakes here and there, but the seas, the great seas will indeed be gone. Right now, only a small part of the earth is usable land as it is. The oceans take up most of the surface and mountainous and desert areas take up a large part of the land in present day time. But we know that this will indeed be changed. Let's go on. Then I, John, saw the holy city. New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. Please note that it is prepared as a bride for her husband. But the new Jerusalem will not 
actually be the bride. Catch that. It is prepared as a bride for her husband, my young brother and my young sister. But New Jerusalem will not actually be the bride. But the bride of Christ are you and I. Those that are saved. And this is indeed discussed earlier in this book of Revelations we are in now. Let's move forward. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them. And they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. We will be with God directly in his presence. I say we will be with God directly in his presence. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Moving forward. And God will wipe away every tear from your eye, from their eyes. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain. For the former things have passed away. Let's pause there. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's pause there. Now, um, um, as I have discussed before, um, regarding the rapture of Christ, when we are raptured by Jesus Christ. When we are raptured by Jesus, the anointed one and his anointing, we will receive new glorified bodies. One that resemble that of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. But this takes it one step further. Can you imagine what it will be like to be in a place where you will never be sad again? No more grieving the death of a loved one because death is completely, totally wiped out. Hallelujah. No more betrayals by friends. Sin will be gone. No more insults. Sin will be gone. No more sorrow. There is indication that God will remove the painful memories that we will have of those that are unsaved that didn't even make it to heaven. I say there is indication that God will remove the painful memories that we will have of those that are unsaved that didn't make it to heaven. And we also see here another reason why the earth and the first heaven or the atmosphere had to be destroyed and recreated. Death, sorrow, crying and pain are all part of the curse that has extended from Adam to you and me. And the land was defiled by this. Also, the atmosphere is where Satan and his gang of spiritual hoodlums have hung out. And God, in God alone, eliminates their former abode. Hallelujah. Let's continue. Picking up with verse five. Then he who sat on the throne said, behold. I make all things new. And he said to me, write. For these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the foundation of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. Now, pause there real quick. 
uh, because it has been discussed previously regarding the rivers of water in Psalms chapter 1. Do you remember what the rivers of water represented? They were formally discussed in Psalms 1, but do you remember what the rivers of water represented? That's right. They represented the word of God. All of those questions that theologians have argued about for centuries will finally be answered. All of those things that we do not agree in Bible study will be settled. Maybe I'm right. Maybe I'll be wrong. You and I have a desire to know those things that we do not know about God and we will never have a question go unanswered again. We will be given life by God. And this life is found in his word. Now, 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 now. In verses 7 and 8, we see a contrast between the haves and the have-nots. Mm -hmm. We see a contrast. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Verse seven, he who overcomes shall inherit all things and I will be his God and he shall be my son. Pause, pause. He who overcomes is the saved if you were unaware. And those who have placed their trust in Jesus Christ, we shall uh, uh, um, let's go back. Let's go back. <laughs> Seven. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and shall be my, and he shall be my son. He who overcomes is the same. Those who have placed their trust in Jesus Christ, we shall inherit the riches of heaven, which I will tell you about in a little bit. Let's pick back up in verse eight. But the cowardly, the unbelieving. The abominable. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What that commercial say? Uh-oh. Let me go back to the beginning of that one. Verse 8. We in, If you're just getting here, we're in Revelations 21. We're now at the 8th verse. The subject today is simply, it's your choice. It's your choice. And while at first we were going to really hammer in on hell... The, the leading led to us hammering in heaven with a touch of a glimpse of hell but really hammering in this heaven thing <coughs> excuse me amen so again verse 8 but the cowardly unbelieving abominable murderers sexually immoral sorcerers idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. It is called the second death. Excuse me one second. I'm not sure what that was right now that was just going over the screen i'm sure y'all just saw those balloons i don't know where that just came from but we're back amen <laughs> um yeah we're back amen um again one more time verse eight there's something i'm trying to get y'all to catch in this verse eight <laughs> but the cowardly the unbelieving, the abominable. Y'all need to write, underline that word abominable right there. We gonna deal with that. The cowardly, the unbelieving, the abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Now, 
Now, pause because right here in the middle of a description of the beginning of an eternity of an eternity with God, the father, son and Holy Spirit. God gives us a quick reminder that those who don't choose to be with him have a different destiny. But more about that a little later. We have seen that we will never sorrow. We've seen we will never cry. We've seen we will never be betrayed. We've seen we will never have a single question that we cannot have answered by God. We have seen that we have one of two destinies that lie before us. Let's take a moment and let's look at the good side of the equation. The good side of the equation. And even pause there before we do that because we can't brush over this. Go back and look at verse 8 again. <laughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Underline the word abominable again. <laughs> Excuse me. And I want you to write a side note for those of you that are taking notes and keeping notes. You guys know that we, we highly encourage you to always take notes here and to take the word back and study it out for yourself. Verse 8, chapter 21, underline abominable. Why am I emphasizing on underlining that word out of all other words? It's simple. There's very few things. I can actually count on less than five fingers. The things that are literally called and classified abominable. They are not classified as just a general sin or shortcoming or thorn but they are literally classified as abominable. And there are those that think just because you have this classification, it won't affect your ability in partaking in the joys of heaven after this life is over. But we clearly see here that abominable as well is included in those whose second death will result in an ending in the lake of fire and brimstone. <laughs> Excuse me, amen. But we'll talk about that later on. So let's look at the good side of the equation. Verse 9. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls filled with the seven plagues came to me and talked with me saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Having the glory of God, her light was like a most precious stone like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Pause, pause. The new Jerusalem will be like no other thing you have ever seen in your life. It will shine with the glory of God. Let's look at verse 12. Also, she had a great and high wall with 12 gates and 12 angels at the gates and names written on them, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south and three gates on the west. Now, the wall of the city had 12 foundations and on them were the names of the 12 apostles of the Lamb. Pause, pause. Um, keep in mind that the number 12 indicates government in the Bible. Write that down. The number 12 indicates government in the Bible, 12 apostles, 12 tribes, etc. Let's go on. Verse 15. 
And he who talked with me had a gold reed to measure the city, its gates and its wall. The city is laid out as a square. Its length is as great as its breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs. Its length, breadth, and height are all equal. 12,000 furlongs. Then he measured its wall. One hundred and one uh, one hundred and forty four cubits. According to the measure of a man that is of an angel. Again, <coughs> excuse me, verse 17. Then he measured its wall. One hundred and forty four cubits. According to the measure of a man that is of an angel now pause there for a minute because the angel measured out the new jerusalem for john not john the baptist john the revelator and the new jerusalem will be 1500 miles long wide and high forming a cube Catch that. The New Jerusalem will be 1,500 miles long, wide, long, and high, forming a cube. The size of the New Jerusalem will be like nothing we've ever seen. The size alone would startle you, literally. To get a good idea, about the size of the new Jerusalem. This is a building that will stretch from the state of Maine, for example, from the state of Maine, a building, a building, a building, a mansion, a palace that again will stretch from the state of Maine to the state of Florida. It would be 360,000 stories tall. The walls will be almost as thick as a football field. But if you think that is that this is impressive, let's take a look at exactly what it's made of. So we know it's going to be 1,500 miles long wide and high forming a cube the new jerusalem will for point of reference an example will stretch the new jerusalem the building will stretch from the state of maine to the state of florida and will be 360,000 stories tall and the walls will be almost as thick as a football field Let's continue. To give you an example of the height, the USX building in Pittsburgh, for example, is only about 68 stories tall. Um, and there have been people that have ran up the steps of this tower in a foot trace once or twice. And to tell you, they couldn't imagine what it would be like to run up 360,000 flights of stairs, let alone trying to go up 68 stories. I sure enough could not imagine it. And just the ground level of the New Jerusalem would hold over 8 billion, I mean, excuse me, over 11 billion people. The ground level alone, I'm not talking about the entire encompassing uh, uh, containing capacity of New Jerusalem. We're talking at the ground level alone. Like walking into an apartment building. We know the ground level is apartment building can hold X amount of people before we got to add on another level. The ground level alone of the New Jerusalem would hold over 11 billion people. And when Jesus said he would prepare a place for us, 
Yes, my brother and my sister, he did really mean it. Just looking at the new Jerusalem will be beyond anything we have seen. If you have seen the movie Independence Day, you saw how big the ships were compared to the cities and how big the mothership is com in comparison to each of those ships. Well, the new Jerusalem will be much, much, much bigger. Much bigger. Verse 18. Verse 18. The construction of its wall was of jasper. And the city was pure gold, like clear glass. The best example I can give you of this would be think of windows. Think of windows. Verse 19. The foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with all kinds of precious stone. The first fountain was jasper or transparent gold. When you see the word Jasper in scripture and as it, as it relates to the description of the new Jerusalem, when you hear Jasper, think of transparent gold, transparent gold. I even imagine now I got gold right here in my hand, solid gold. I'm trying to, I'm trying to imagine now if this gold was transparent, how would that look? Some of you guys sometimes should take your gold sometimes that you own. Nothing wrong with owning a little gold. As long as your heart is not set on it. There's nothing wrong with you owning a little gold, a little silver, whatever your preference. But sometimes in your spare time, take a piece of gold and look at it. And try to imagine how it will look. If that gold in your hand was actually transparent gold. And if you can get an idea, a formulated idea of how that will look, you've just seen how Jasper looks. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so Jasper again is described as transparent gold. So let's go back again. Verse 19. The foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with all kinds of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper or a transparent gold. The second was sapphire or a or hard as a diamond, but blue in color. Sapphire, hard as a diamond, but blue in color. The third, Chalcedony, which being sky blue with other colors running through it. The fourth being emerald or bright green. Verse 20, the fifth, Sardony, X, Sar Sar Sardonyx, Sardonyx, excuse me, or red and white stone. Sardonyx is a red and white stone. The sixth, Sardius. Or a common red jewel. The seventh. Crystallite. Or similar to Jasper. But the. Uh, um, similar to Jasper. Gold but transparent. The eighth. Burial. Or a sea green jewel. The ninth being topaz. Or a yellow green. Transparent. The tenth. Being chrysoprase or another shade of green. The 11th, jacinth just, just just or violet color. And the 12th, amethyst. Uh, uh, excuse me, I, I can't believe I'm saying that wrong. Amethyst. Am this purple right here. Y'all, excuse me, I always get tongue twisted on that word. Amen. <laughs> now, pause. This is just the foundation we just described. This is literally just the foundation we described. Not the entire New Jerusalem, 
We only just gave a description of the foundation right now. It's incredible if you think about it, how all these colors are combined and stretching as far as the eye can see. Verse 21, the 12 gates were 12 pearls. <coughs> Excuse me. The 12 gates were 12 pearls. Each individual gate was of one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, like transparent glass. Pause. Pause. Um, each gate will be one solid piece of pearl. You might want to note that. Each gate will be one solid piece of pearl. The streets of gold will be a transparent glass with a gold element to it. But I saw no temple in it, verse 22. But I saw no temple in it for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. Again, verse 22. But I saw no temple in the new Jerusalem. I saw no, when he says I saw no temple in it, he's referring to the new Jerusalem. Verse 22, but I saw no temple in it. Why? For the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb of the Lord are its temple. Verse 23. The city had no need of the sun or of the moon to shine in it. For the glory of God illuminated it. The lamb is its light. Hallelujah. Verse 24. And the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light. And the kings of the earth bring their glory and honor into it. Its gates shall not be shut at all by day, for there shall be no night there. There is no nighttime there. Pause, pause. Evil will be conquered. Say that again. Evil will be conquered. Around here, we used to be able to leave the house with the doors unlocked. But we know in 2023, this is not the case now. But in heaven, there will be no locks on the doors. Hey, glory be to God. Verse 26. No locks on the doors. Verse 26. They shall bring the glory and the honor of the nations into it. Verse 27. But there shall by no means enter it anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie. But only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's go back to verse 27 again. But there shall by no means enter it anything. Number one, that defiles. That defiles. Well, let's go back up real quick. Let's go back up real quick. Anything that defiles. Anything that defiles. Well, what are some of the things, again, that defile, that would not entering the new Jerusalem. You ain't going to have it. I don't care what society say. Uh, <clears throat> the coward, the unbelieving, the abominable. 
the murderer, the sexually immoral, the sorcerer, the idolater, and all liars will miss that and wake up in the fire that burneth with, in the lake that burneth with fire and brimstone. So again, <clears throat> but there shall be no mean, by no means enter it anything that defiles or causes an abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Say that last word again, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. I have to pause there because when you read these scriptures, my brother and my sister, we find out quickly already that there are things that this society and culture have made the norm and have made popular of the day that according to these scriptures, it will be impossible, impossible for you to still make it to heaven embracing these ideologies and life choices. Those abominable choices, those lifestyles that the Bible clearly calls abominable. Regardless of how, where you stand on the issue and how it's addressed and all of that, at the end of the day, and y'all know what I'm talking about. It's still abominable according to the word of God and according to what we just learned today. According to what we just learned today. Those that live the abominable lifestyle will not inherit the new Jerusalem. You can sing in the choir. You can go minister to people. You can take folks shopping and give them gifts and everything you can think to do to be a good person. But you will not. If you die in the sin of abominable lifestyle, wake up in heaven. Now, we're going to tell the truth and shame the devil today. My young brother, my young sister. I know the culture of the norm today will be to lie just to lie, to sleep around just to sleep around, to get it in just to get it in, whether it's the opposite sex or the same, or the same sex. Hmm. Well, according to what we've covered so far today, if you fall under any of those categories when you take your last breath, you have no chance of making it to the new Jerusalem to heaven. No chance. This is Tough Love Sunday, Youngster Sunday. We got to really understand some stuff, y'all. This ain't nothing to be played with. The spirit of instant sudden death is in the land right now, sweeping from the north and the south, the east and the west. Ooh, I'm, I'm trying not to even get on that right now. Because then we got to start talking about the pale white horse and the various end of day prophetic things that are going on as we speak. As we speak. Don't risk going to sleep in any of the conditions without repenting first before you close your eyes. For there's no guarantee that you're going to wake up tomorrow. And no, it's not about age no more, my brother, my sister. Focus having heart attacks younger and younger and younger at a rate that's unheard of. Dropping dead. Dealing with this, dealing with that. At an unheard of rate at ages that were that are unheard of that is even happening at. So we ain't got time to mess around with this thing. Hallelujah. 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 Parents. Before I continue, get the blood off your hands. Oh, well, I, I don't really condone that. And um, I, I know that's not necessarily the, the right way. And I know, I know as a Christian, we don't really advocate that. But that's still my baby boy. That's still my baby girl. And I'd rather them do that here than to be out doing it anywhere. This line of mentality has screwed us up. Put your foot down. In my house. Me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As long as you're in this house, we're going to serve the Lord. As long as you're in this house. 
There will be no abominable activities and immoral. We're giving too much leeway. Too much compromise in the land. And this is why our youth and young adult are so lost. There's so much compromise in the land. And the sad part is the bulk of the compromising the youth have encountered has been by those that are over them to give them watch and care as their leaders and parents and protectors. They've seen the other side behind closed doors. Mm. Lord Jesus, help us. Lord Jesus, help us. Lord Jesus, help us. Help us not to condone what you condemn. Help us not to compromise what you say don't compromise. Help us to take a stand and not be a bunch of cowards walking around claiming boldness in the name of Jesus. Stop being a coward for that check, my brother, my sister. Take a stand. What's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. What will get you to heaven will get you to heaven and what will guarantee you that you will bust hell wide open will indeed do that too. Stop compromising. Be better examples to our kids. Stop being hypocritical compromisers. Because this is why we're having such an issue reaching the younger generation today. And this is why so many of them that you think that's on the right path, once they get out your presence, uh, you see how much of a hellian, a hellian they really are. Tell the truth, shame the devil. Tell the truth, shame the devil, but we're going to get some deliverance today in the land. Amen. Hallelujah. We now, now, now that we know what heaven will look like. Let's take a look at what life will what life will be like. We know what heaven will look like, but what will life be like? We gotta take a stand. <laughs> Part of our heavenly existence is that we will recognize others from this life. Let me say that again because there are those that agree with that statement and those that disagree with that statement based upon to, uh, your theology and your philosophy. Um, and part of our heavenly existence is that we will recognize others from this life. We see in the story of Lazarus and the rich man that Lazarus knew the rich man looking at him in Hades from paradise. If you go to heaven, you will see others that made it. Grandparents, friends, and some famous people. One man that I would personally like to meet is Daniel. <laughs> Excuse me. Daniel. You will live forever. In John in the book of St. John, chapter 10, verse 28, Jesus tells us, and I give unto them eternal life and they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. At camp, at camp, at a time, there were kids told to remember it this way. You live forever. You never die and nobody can take it away. I say they taught you live forever. You never die and nobody can take it away. We are given new bodies. Resurrection bodies. Like, uh, like a Superman or a Superwoman. Villains can shoot at them, punch them. Drop boulders on him and throw knives at him and he appears indestructible. But what about kryptonite? Hmm. Your resurrection body is indestructible, my brother and my sister. It cannot be destroyed. Not even kryptonite will affect it. We will experience a pleasure and joy that we have never known. 
how many here like, how many here on our various platforms like to ride a bike? Well, I tell you, riding a bike is probably one of the most funnest things I've ever done in life, especially in my earlier childhood years. I loved my silver and black BMX. And um, I rode down the street once and I probably hit somewhere between 50 to 60 miles per hour going down a slanted hill in the neighborhood. And the wind hit my face and the bike and my body moving uh, as one and the incredible speed was awesome. It kind of felt at a moment like a roller coaster or playing a Nintendo 64 or uh, uh, finally beating the game or whatever that good feeling is for, for you. Now, imagine that thing that you like to do most, the pleasure and joy that you will have here will not even be close to what you will experience in heaven. For example, it's like for some people, for lack of a better example, for some people, it's like comparing cereal versus pizza. It's a tremendous difference in desire and enjoyment and pleasure versus whether you just eating some old cereal or you eating like your favorite pizza or something like that. You will be in direct contact with God. Direct. Direct. When Isaiah and Ezekiel saw the majesty of heaven, they fell down on their faces. Not only will you see heaven and be stunned, you will be in direct contact with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. It will be more powerful of an event than we can imagine with angels and other saints looking on. We will be in a state of constant worship. It won't be boring, dull, or anything like that. We will be in God's direct presence and no service like you ever saw will be anything like this, like we're going to be experiencing. The singing will never be off key. And the music will be surreal, unreal. <laughs> but best of all, we will not need to go to a church or temple for God himself will be our temple. Let me tell you about a turtle's favorite things. Yes, I said a turtle. First, there's God, then there's mom and dad, then there's eating. Yes, turtle loves to eat. And um, a few days ago, the question came up from someone. If we will eat in heaven, will we eat in heaven? The answer, my brother and sister, is yes, we will. When Jesus arose from the dead, he had a resurrected body, indestructible, but also able to pass through walls. But he also ate with the disciples, and we will eat with him at the marriage supper of the Lamb. So the answer is yes. If you want to eat, you will be able to eat. If heaven is perfect, then won't heaven be perfectly boring? You might think or ask. No, no. We will have the ability to understand in ways that we cannot now. And we will have eternity to learn from God. God's knowledge is infinite. As we see in the book of Psalms, chapter 147, verse 5, it reads, Great is our Lord, 
and mighty in power, his understanding is infinite. According to the New King James Version. With all these wonderful things, I'll bet that you are sold on heaven. No more pain, no more suffering, no more guilt over things we, do, we did or didn't do. We will be able to accept ourselves as God does without looking at what we did or what we look like or how well we did in school. We will be satisfied all of the time. We will be happy all of the time. We will enjoy ourselves for all eternity. Hallelujah. We will see Jesus. It's that type of cool. Our friends and family that made it to heaven, we will no longer have dental visits, no more scraped knees, no more broken fingernails, no more indigestion. Hallelujah. Now let's look briefly at the alternative. I say briefly because to properly cover the alternative would take much more time than we have today. But I promise you, I promise you, this will be the first of many lessons we will dive deep into in heaven and in hell for the benefit of the youth and young adult. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Down the line, we will continue to address these things in parts. Amen. So again, let's look at the alternative. I really don't like to talk about this, but you got to know at least bare minimum this. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you do not choose to put your faith in Jesus, you go to hell. I'm going to tell you that hell is the most scariest place you've ever been or heard of in your life. What is hell like? Hell was described in verse 8 as fire and brimstone. Those that experience the second death, which is separation from God, will be in a place scarier than you've ever imagined. Being separated from all that is good. Being in the dark and being alone. Demons are actually in torment right now, this very moment, this very second. There are demons, demons that are in torment. Right now, right now, um, um, they're in torment, <clears throat> excuse me, right now. And the Bible shows that these demons are alone. Isolated from others and in darkness. Those things that you like, you will crave but will never get. Let's look at Proverbs 27, 20 real quickly. Proverbs 27 and 20. As we prepare to close. Proverbs 27 and 20. Sheol and abandoned. Abandoned are never satisfied and never satisfied are the eyes of man. <laughs> you have a choice. We all have a choice. The choice you will make, though, will last forever and ever and ever and as long as forever is. A choice for all that is good in God or a living nightmare forever or a living nightmare forever so my question for you today my brother and sister is what is your choice today 
what is your choice today? Really briefly here, um, I wasn't going to do this, but just really briefly, I'm feeling the need for something. Amen. What will be your choice today, my brother and sister? Off of what you've heard so far today, I could only pray and hope that you truly chose Jesus, that you choose Jesus, that you understand the, the chance you play, the game you play, the chance you take, <clears throat> excuse me, taking your last breath in a sinful state, taking your last breath living an abominable lifestyle. The chance you take doing this and taking your last breath. Do you realize what's at stake, my brother and my sister? And the fact that the time is of hand, there is no time to play, there is no time to joke. Amen. It is time to get it right and to be right. It is time. There's a lot more information I can give you right now on hell, the gnashing of teeth, the different torments and torture chambers. But today we want to focus on the good of heaven and Jesus Christ and the fact that he's trying to get you to avoid going through all that. Those of you that are willingly living the open homosexual lifestyle that the Bible calls abominable in more than one places. We found out today if you die in an abominable way of living. To answer the question, will certain people make it to heaven? The answer is no. The Bible says the abominable as well. You will have no part in the new Jerusalem. Is our sexual perversions and sexual immoralities and perverted life choices worth missing heaven altogether? Is it really worth missing heaven altogether? I want to pray for somebody today. Amen. I want to pray for somebody today. Before we have our communion and things, I want to pray for somebody today. Hallelujah. I want to pray for somebody that may have forgot how real heaven and hell, and hell are. I want to pray for somebody that you either A, may have never accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. Or B, maybe you did and you got away from it. You backslid. <clears throat> Some of you may have just not taken it as serious as you should have. I want to pray for y'all today. In the name of Jesus, I want to pray for y'all. Um, You may be somebody that got so caught up in society's new norms, you forgot the truth of the word never changed. And there is a soon impending judgment coming. And we want to be on the right side of the fence. No way that you're living that contradicts the word is worth what comes to unbelievers in the afterlife. Nothing is worth that. So I want to pray for you today, my young brothers and my young sisters and my older brothers and older sisters. Some of y'all have gotten so stuck into the reality that I admit it's a reality. So many of you have gotten so stuck in the reality of the fact that a person can on this planet live in a heavenly state of being or you can live in a hellified state of life, a hellacious state of being while you're still on this planet. Yes, you can. But we need to be focused on what we need to do, how we need to live to ensure when we take our last breath, <clears throat> we wake up in the right final resting place. People are passing left and right, and age literally has nothing to do with it anymore. I'm an 83 baby, proud 83 baby. When I was growing up, for the most part, you didn't really see death 
with younger people the way you do now unless it was behind some street nonsense or something like that. But just the way that instant death is sweeping the land, especially with the youth. Heart attack rate out of control with the youth. Hmm. No man knows the hour nor the day, but we all are supposed to know the signs of the season according to the word. And if you look at the signs of the season, the fact that they have the website up right now for the world ID, you guys know that the same creator of the AI technology, I forget his name, but if you look it up, the same creator of the AI technology that is now being pushed is the same owner and creator of the world ID. You could Google it. They have a website up for it right now. And they are pre preparing to try to unroll it on the world. A one world ID ready to go right now. Can actually pull it up and check it out for yourself right now. The state IDs were a testing ground to see how people will respond to it. Understand where we are on the prophetic calendar right now. There's no time to waste, my brother and sister. There's no time to waste. The majority of prophecies gone forth have indeed already been fulfilled. The majority of them. The greater majority of them. Amen. <clears throat> and outside of the world ID situation, there's other things that I could point out to you right now that are happening on a global scale that is verifiable. That further lets us know there's no time to play. We are that generation that shall. We are that generation that shall. We are that generation, and this is the season of the imminent return of our Savior. Let's make sure we're on the right side of the fence. No, that nobody said that, that you was perfect or had to be perfect. For none is perfect, none but he. And in he, we are made perfect. He took on sin being sinless. He already paid the price for us. Why would you give the devil the satisfaction after Jesus already paid the price to say, I know you paid the price, Jesus, but I'm going to pass on that and go deal with it myself. Why? I, 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 why? Who you laying with ain't that serious. I'm sorry. They're not that serious. It's not that whatever you want to call it. Hello, somebody to wake up in hell. So I pray this word got through to you today. And um, in a few Sundays, we will circle back to this and we'll get deeper on the hell side. But today I need to remind y'all about the heaven side. What to push for, what to strive for. We will follow this up in a few weeks and go deeper in hell and deeper into the compartments of hell and things like that. But again, today, Something we need to remind the youth about, and in some people's cases, teach the youth about. Look towards heaven. Parents, let's remind our kids, don't look at us. We're not perfect. But let me take you to the master. Who can improve and make us all better. Amen. Glory be to God. So if you've never accepted Christ or you backslid or you're caught on the fence, I want to pray for you. You live in an abominable lifestyle and you need deliverance. I want to pray for you. You are a habitual liar. I want to pray for you. Yes. 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 I want to pray for you. So every eye uh, closed, every head bowed. <laughs> Dear Lord Jesus, we humbly come to before your throne of grace, thanking you for your goodness and your absolute mercy. We confess every sin to you. We ask you to wash it all out. Make us fresh. Make us new. Make us strong as a tree planted by the rivers of water. Make us white as snow. Cleanse us with the hyssop. Renew. Restore. Do it, Lord, in our lives in the name of Jesus. If you know you fall into one of the categories that was covered today or even just now, please raise your right hand to faith and stretch it to your screen or monitor. 
<clears throat> excuse me, and repeat after me. Lord Jesus, I am a sinner in need of your salvation. I confess that Lord, that, that, the, uh, that, that, that God raised Jesus from the dead. I confess that he was crucified on the cross for me. He was buried. He died. And three days later, he was risen again, arisen again with all power in his hand and is the only begotten son of God and is the one and only soon coming Messiah. In Jesus name, thank you for saving me, Lord. Thank you for writing my name in the Lamb's book of life. In Jesus name, thank God. Amen. <laughs> my brother, my sister, if you prayed that prayer with me and you meant it in your heart, you say, your name is in the Lamb's book of life. The angels in heaven are rejoicing over you right, right now. If you never had a party thrown for you in your lifetime on this planet, heaven is literally throwing you a party right now. So welcome into the family. Amen. Make sure you write us and let us know that you accepted Christ and we'll get some materials out to you and get you further acclimated on this journey. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. So now we're going to prepare for the Lord's Supper. But before we do, um, we need to give you guys an opportunity to give today. Amen. It is time to give. You guys know we did service slightly different today. Um, the given prompts are on the screen for you. Um, we're going to say a blessing in a moment for those who have already given this week. Um, a few of our members, including myself, and I'm going to give again now. And um, we're going to pray for those that are giving as we speak. And we're going to pray a blessing for those that are considering giving. And we're going to pray a blessing for those who would um, like to give but just don't have it to give. Please remember here at the ministry that we don't believe in financial tithing alone only. It is a part of it and should lead the way. But we also believe in the tithe of talent and time. Talent and time. We believe in the tithe of 10% finances, 10% time, and 10% talent. You got 24 new hours each day this past week. How many hours out those days did you give to the Lord exclusively? Did you tithe back to him for that fresh 24 hours? Somebody say, Lord, help us. Uh, of, your, of your talent and skills and abilities, God has allowed you to either be born with or to learn and acquire over time. How much of that do you use for his glory in his kingdom expansion? So again, we believe tithing and offering is financial. It is time and it is talent. So right now we're addressing the financial portion. If you need to pay your tithes and offerings, the given prompts and information is on the screen. Um, if you want to give a free will offering and donation, just, hey, y'all keep expanding the kingdom and the earth. Go ahead. You're welcome to do that as well. And for those that are giving out of a need. Sometimes it is a fact when you're in need, you give out of that need to assist in meeting another need and God takes care of your need. Everybody go shot time. So whatever category you fall in, we invite you to give here with very, very fertile grounds. Amen. We've been incorporated since April 2023 of this year, and we already going to show some of the members the shopping center that we're requiring this week and things like that. God has blessed us. It's fertile ground. We got focus being blessed. We've had some healings take place already. We've had people brought back from the brink of death literally already. We've experienced to God's glory, promotions in people's lives, all kind of testimonies that have been happening. It is truly, it is truly um, blessed ground, amen? It is truly blessed ground. So we're going to pray a prayer of blessing right now in the name of Jesus so that we can get to the Lord's Supper. If you do not have your communion elements ready, please get them ready. Please get your communion elements ready. I'm going to give you a quick second, and I'm going to give y'all a quick second to get y'all gifts together. 
Amen. Quick second, and we're going to pray. Oh, glory to your name, Jesus. Oh, glory. Oh, you can never give enough, and you can never, ever beat God giving. And so I'm one of the people that did tithes and offerings this week as well. I'm about to give again um, because you can't beat God giving. And he showed me for himself. Amen. So let me do mine again and then we will pray. Uh, CLG Cathedral. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Yeah, y'all know I always say your bishop drink his own Kool-Aid. If I'm preaching it to y'all, you better believe I'm practicing it today, man. Glory be to God. <laughs> Glory be to God. Okay, let me make sure. Glory be to God. Let's prepare to pray. Let Let's prepare to pray. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gifts and we thank you for the givers. We thank you for those that are continually covenant partnering with us in expanding your work in the earth. We thank you for every prayers report that's come in already. And we thank you for the testimonies and prayers reports that are coming in this week by faith through your grace and mercy, your fulfilled promises in our lives in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the obedience of your children. For those that obediently pay their tithe and offerings, we pray continue blessings in their lives. Some 60, some 80, even 100 fold multiplication in their giving out of obedience to you. For it's not about me, it's not about the church, but it's about you and obedience to you and the assistance and the expansion of your work in the earth. So we thank you for honoring their obedience and blessing them. We thank you that they don't go with nothing lacking in the name of Jesus. Not one tither under the sound of my voice. Not one first fruits giver under the sound of my voice and the power and authority of the name of Jesus shall experience any lack. There's nothing lacking, nothing missing, nothing broken. This shall be their week of restoration. This shall be their week. This is their time, their season, in Jesus' name, to be blessed, for their obedience to be honored. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you for those who just gave. We thank you for those that are considering giving, and we thank you even for those that wish they had it to give. Bless everyone that it applies to, some 60, some 80, even 100 fold. In Jesus' mighty, magnificent name, we pray. And we all said amen. Amen. Let's prepare to celebrate the Eucharist. Wall of love, come be with us. Wall of love, come Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus, it washes white as snow. Amen. Hallelujah. Father God, we bless the bread and we bless the cup in the name of Jesus that is being taken symbolically as your broken body and your shed blood for us. We thank you that we have nothing missing, nothing broken, for you were broken in place for us. We thank you that we have no sickness, we have no disease, because you have already healed us by your stripes. And for those that may be struggling in the health realm, we thank you that the power of your healing has kicked in the realization of your healing has taken root in their hearts and they are now accepting the benefits that we gain from your sacrifice at Calvary, that being included, being healed by your stripes. We thank you for visiting the hospital rooms right now. We thank you for walking down the cell blocks right now. We thank you for saving the unsaved, cleansing the filthy, for healing the sick, 
and making us whole. We thank you for every benefit that is due us from keeping this sacrament, for keeping you in it in remembrance. We thank you for every benefit, for every covenant benefit that comes through the shed blood of Jesus. We praise you for it now in Jesus' name. Lord, forgive us. Lord, forgive us and cause us to be better. In Jesus' name, amen. Most of you guys already know you are not supposed to take um, the Lord's Supper if you have not been water baptized at least. So if you have not been water baptized and you partake right now, that's between you and God. Um, I need you to reach out to us as soon as possible so we can get you scheduled to be water baptized. And yes, for those that have been wondering, the new location that some of you guys will be joining me at uh, checking out this week. We will be installing our own baptismal pool on site. So we ain't got to worry about that. In the meantime, we will get you scheduled with one of our neighboring ministries, but we are going to be installing a, a baptism, baptismal pool. And um, we'll, be, we'll let you guys know this week as we go and assess, decorate, and arranging things to prepare to move into in-person services. Amen. So let's keep on, on track here. Uh, according to 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three, the B clause through verse 25, the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Now, briefly pause. And reflect, close your eyes and reflect and ask God if there's any bitterness found in your heart, any malice, any hatred, anything that is unlike God, if it's found in your heart, ask him right now to remove it and to forgive you in the name of Jesus so you don't partake and drink damnation to yourselves. So please take a second and ask his forgiveness. Amen. <clears throat> Excuse me. Amen. Amen. Give me one second. There's something I forgot. Amen. 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 And amen. Amen. And amen. amen. All right. So, again, 1 Corinthians 11, 23b, clause through 25, it is written, The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Take and eat ye all. Amen. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Take and drink ye all. Amen. Ooh, amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. <clears throat> Excuse me. Amen. Eyes closed, heads bowed. <clears throat> Excuse me. We thank you, Father God, for your sacrifice of sending your son Jesus to die on Calvary's cross for us. To die for the penalty of our sins. And we thank you for raising him three days later. And for him now sitting at your right hand making intercessions for us. Uh, we thank you for what you did on the cross and to allow us to have a relationship with you. Thank you for the grace and forgiveness and help us to honor you with our everyday lives in Jesus' mighty name. 
Amen. Right hand of faith. I mean, right hand of faith towards your screen, please. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior. Glory, be, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. And the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always in the precious, powerful name of Jesus. Amen. My brothers, my sisters, may you go in the peace of Christ and the peace of the anointed one and his anointing. Thanks be to God Almighty. Amen. Remember, I love you with the love of the Lord. There's nothing you can do about it. Um, stay tuned to our social media platforms later today as we'll be dropping information and announcements for this week. And outside of that, I pray that you go have some time with your family, get you some good vittles. I know I'm about to go get me some vittles. And um, honestly, to be truthful, I'm about to go get some vittles and then go get some of this cut down because it is very hot. And I will see you guys shortly. I love you with the love of the Lord.